right, welcome back. So we have our game coming along, but it's not much of a game if there's no objective to either succeed or fail. So we ultimately need to define some criteria of how our main character Larry gets rescued or how does he die. So the first thing we'll do in this video is we're going to put together a heads up display or HUD that's going to indicate some important criteria that are going on during gameplay. So I mocked up this quick overlay. So I'm just up here in Photoshop. But my idea here is that we have Larry and he has these four different attributes that are updating all the time based on health, hunger, thirst, and the rescue. Health will start at 100. And if it ever reaches zero, then we die. Hunger and thirst, the idea is that there'll be these food caches in these different places around the island to collect water. And if you can do that fast enough before these go all the way to zero, then you'll be able to replenish these progress bars. But if at any time one of these progress bars, either hunger or thirst hits zero, then it will take a chunk out of our health. And then rescue, we can have that start at zero. And if we can stay alive until this reaches a full bar of zero to 100, then we win the game and we're effectively rescued. So before we begin the overlay, which is actually pretty easy to do, we need to add some important attributes or variables to our main character. We head over to the content drawer character and we head over to third person BP blueprints. This is where we have those third person blueprints and we're going to select our Larry character. All right. And then over here, it doesn't really matter which view you're in, but make sure you're over here in variables. We're going to add some new variables. So we're going to add a health variable and that needs to be of type float. We're going to add a hunger variable of float, thirst, and rescue. Now, over on the right side, we can set some default values right here, but we need to compile first. There we go. So, health. What I'm going to do though, I mean, this will start at 100 when we actually build the game so that we can see the progress bar kind of in the middle. Let's start with 50 and we're going to do that for all of these. So we're going to get half of a progress bar. In fact, maybe I'll just stagger these a little bit. So 50. Okay. Sorry. Here we go. Health 50. Hunger. Let's do 70. Thirst, let's do 30. It doesn't matter again. This is just to kind of demonstrate it on the UI. And rescue, we'll say, is at 45, whatever. We're, we're going to eventually come back and set these to default 100, 100, 100, and 0. So now that we have our variables out of the way, we can connect those into a actual use, user interface or overlay on top of our game that we can use to track those different attributes. In order to do that, we need to create a heads up display blueprint. So if I jump over here to content, maybe we'll just keep it in here in this third person blueprint with the character. We're gonna right click and under user interface, we're gonna create a new widget blueprint. And we can just call this it doesn't matter. We can call this HUD. And we can double click on it. And here we go. So this is where we can start to design. Just like that example I had here in Photoshop, we're going to replicate this right here in our game. Okay. So we're primarily going to be using two different palette items over here the text and the progress bar. So let's throw some text out here. This text we can call over here, we'll call this health. Nice. And then we'll drag a, prog a progress bar out. 
And the progress bar is nice in that it is expecting a value from essentially 0 to 1 being 0 to 100, but it is a percentage. So we are going to have to do an adjustment in our widget blueprint to compensate from going from 0 to 100 to 0 to 1. But we will do that. But if I click 0.5, you can see what's happening here. Now, in the example that I created, health is green. So let's change this progress bar to green. That's fairly easy. Just down here in the properties under appearance, fill color. Right here, we can change this to more of a green color. So maybe something like that. Yeah, that looks pretty slick. Okay, all right, with health done, let's do hunger. So if you want to just click and shift click, hit control C to copy, click out and then control V, you can actually just copy and paste. So we'll do something like that, maybe even a little bit closer together. All right, we'll do something like this. We'll do hunger. And we'll go change this to a different color. That looks good. Same thing we're gonna do again. We're gonna shift, click, control C, click out, control V, and this is going to be thirst. So we'll come over to our text and do thirst. We'll do this kind of a light blue color. Something like over here, kind of mimic water. Great. And one more time, control C out, control V. And this will be our rescue. Rescue. Beautiful. Let's go in here. And uh, do kind of a gold orange color. That looks too cool to that other one. Something like that. Okay. All right. Now, before we move on to bindings, a couple other settings here that could be of interest to you. For example, the way that the progress bar is working, you'll notice that right here we have left to right. You can do other things here, like you could fill it from center, for example, or you could do top to bottom, and this will fill, right now we're at 50%, but it would fill all the way down. You can do right to left. So you can, you do have some options on how this is laid out. This also shows you kind of what this looks like at different sizes, and we haven't plugged in our actual variable values yet, but you can, Kind of experiment with this and see what those look like. You can add some padding. So if we added like some 0.1, it's just adding padding inside of the box. Yeah, I gotta do something a little more extreme so you can tell. But now you can see there's actually some more black padding around there. So that's completely an option. We're not going to use it though. So we're gonna set this back to zero, zero. Obviously, come in here, play with some, some of these different settings. They're pretty self-explanatory on what they do. And uh, yeah, you, can, you do have some extra settings around how this stuff looks and feels. So that's nice. All right, so what we need to do now is bound these values to the variable values on our character. Whatever the variable value of health is on our character, this is always reflecting that same value. What we need to do is over here, where we were playing with the progress bar, we have an option here to bind. So we can create a binding right here. So we're gonna do that, create a binding. And what we've done, we've now gone into this graph, this widget blueprint graph. It overhears the designer. So that actually comes back to the designer and we have a graph. And we have, it's ready for us to bind in this progress bar, whoops, right here from the character. Now, one thing I wanna show you is over here, we have our variables progress bar, zero, one, two, three. This isn't very helpful. And it's really important as you start to build out your game that you can keep track of what things are. So if I come back to designer and I come over to progress bar zero, which is the health, and I rename this to health bar, that's going to help me keep track of what these things are. So this is hunger bar, 
This is the thirst bar. And this is going to be really important. Okay. Last one is rescue bar. Okay. If I jump back over to the graph, now you can see the actual variable names, which is important so we know what we're doing here. So I'm going to unplug this and we're going to add some logic in between here. We want to feed that value of 0 to 1 in here, that percentage value, whether it's 0 0.5 or 0 0.56 or whatever that percentage is that makes up that bar. So first thing we got to do is got to go get Larry, our third person character right here. So not the animation blueprint. Make sure you're getting the third person character, Larry. We cast to Larry and we need to get the object, which is the player character. So you'll need to get player character. All right, great. That's Larry. And now we should have access to health. So we're going to get the current health. Now we don't want to feed this float directly in because remember, the float we're getting from our character is could be up to 100, where this only supports a value up to 1. So we need to do a conversion here. We need to divide this value by 100. So that's easy enough. Just drag this out, put a division sign in to get division, and then we'll divide this by 100. Now we can feed that in. All right, and this now completes our function for the get health bar percentage. So we can compile, save that, and go back to designer. Now we'll do that for each of these, but if we want to see if this is working, let's throw this overlay up here when we hit play. So if we hit play, obviously nothing's happening. We're not seeing it. So we got to find a way to get our overlay to show up. All right, code we need to add in order to show our overlay can either be put on our player or it could be in, put in our level blueprint as well. And that's what I'll do. So I'm going to jump up here to blueprints. So I'm going to open up the level blueprint. I'm going to right click. We need a begin play. So this happens on the play event. And then what we'll want to do is drag this out and we need to create a widget like this. And the widget class is the HUD that we created. The owning player is the player controller. Excellent. And then we have the HUD here. Now we need to make sure that it gets added to the viewport. So we drag this off and add to viewport. There we go. We want to make sure that the execution pins are connected and the return value as well is connected. Let's give that a try. Let's hit save and compile and let's hit play. Let's see what happens. Well, that's awesome. We do see our overlay now for Larry, but notice our health should be showing. If I go back to Larry, let's see health. Health should be at 50%. So we should be at essentially back on the HUD under health. If I go to designer and the health bar right here, that should be showing 0.5. Where is it? Where's the binding right here? Okay, so that should be binding to 0.5 and it's not for some reason. It should look like that. So let's go find out why our health is not working. I'm going to jump back over to HUD, my HUD here, and I here it is right here. We did not connect our execution pins, so we didn't have that full flow going. So that should fix it. Let's hit compile and save, and let's try again. There we go. Now we can see that health is at 50%. To show that it's working, if I hit escape and I jump into our character, the variable health, Let's try moving this to 100%. And let's save and compile. And now let's hit play again. There we go. Now we have full health at 100%. So this is working. Our binding is working. We are taking our character variable value and is passing all the way up to our heads up display or our overlay here. So that's great. So now we need to go do the same for hunger, thirst, and rescue.
So this is a great point for you to pause the video, go do um, hunger, thirst, and rescue. Go set those up to connect to the player variables and test them and make sure they work. Give that a try and then, then you can unpause and we'll be right back here to, to complete those on the video. Okay, I hope you were able to do that. So just in case you weren't, let's quickly go through those really fast. We're going to go back to the third person player. And again, just make sure we got hunger at 70, thirst is at 30, rescues at 45. I just kind of want to know where those values are to make sure that they are working. So we need to go create a function like this for each one of our characters. One thing you could do is copy this. Why not be lazy, right? And just copy these. We don't need this function anymore. Let's go back to our designer and let's create a new binding for hunger right here. Create binding, disconnect these, paste this in. Just gets us a head start here on not having to go and cast everything again. So not bad. We do need to change this right here. This is no longer health. We need to go get, this one is hunger. So we need to get our current hunger value, feed that in divided by 100, take that and make sure that we can our execution pins or like we saw last time, it will not work. Great, let's do that. Let's go do this also for thirst, same thing, create binding, disconnect, paste. Right here, we're gonna get thirst. We're gonna feed it in here. This goes into here. This goes into here and this here. Awesome. File and save and last one, rescue. Create our binding. Again, disconnect, control V. Into here, delete. Get our rescue value in here and into return value and we should be good to go. Let's compile and save. Let's go back and hit play. All right, this is looking right. This looks great. So now we have each of our character values properly propagating up into the overlay. So now anything we do to affect those values, whether we take damage, we are healed or whatever, they'll properly update here on the screen. So that's great. All right, let's move to the next video and start adding additional functionality.